Many of you have probably never heard of the Milankovitch cycles, and it's really a disservice, I think, that we don't teach these cycles in high school and even earlier in grade school, because to me this is one of the biggest arguments that helps us to understand um, global climate change and how we know that the cycles that we're seeing now or the increase in temperature that we're seeing now are not uh, natural increases in temperature. And that's something that I hear a lot from people is because they'll say, well, the climate has always been changing. Because we, when I was in school, that's where we learned that geologists have determined that climates change, and that we go through ice ages. And while that's true, um, we do know that these happen on a fairly regular basis and that these are based on regular cycles. And so it's not enough to just say, well, the Earth changes over time, and that's nature, and that's how it happens. We actually do know as scientists um, how this happens and some of the causes, and particularly the main underlying cause, which is related to different cycles on Earth and how it moves around the sun. So some evidence that was discovered in the 1800s from lust deposits and from rocks demonstrated that Earth had been through multiple ice ages and that this happened with a fairly steady, it happened in a fairly steady pattern or it was a consistent pattern. And so you can see here, this is a, chat, a graph of the daily insulation. So that's how much solar radiation um, was, was getting to Earth's surface and causing warming at any given time. And this is over the a scale of thousands of years. So you can see this is a huge time scale and they're really condensing it into this one small graph. So scientists notice that this is a fairly steady pattern. If you look from here to here on the graph, you can see that this is a repeating pattern over time. And while there is some noise, it's still fairly consistent. And one thing they noticed in this pattern was that every 100,000 years, the shape of um, there was a, another change, so every 100,000 years there's a change, and they also noticed that this was consistent with the change in the shape of Earth's orbit when the, the change, the, sorry, the shape of the orbit changed from a circle to an oval shape. And this is a phenomenon called eccentricity, and that phenomenon is plotted here, and this actually confuses me because I'm not sure that's how you plot eccentricity. So you say, well, that's so weird. Who knew that Earth was so eccentric? We think of the word eccentric as being kind of odd. But in this case, we're thinking of the word eccentricity um, with an X. And in this case, that's showing that the Earth's orbit changes from a circle to an oval just slightly. And so that causes a change in the amount of solar radiation that gets to Earth. Two other things that scientists noticed was that the angle of Earth's tilt also varies between 22 and 24 degrees. And this tilt of Earth that we see, that's what causes our seasons. And so um, this is a very important phenomenon, but it does change slightly. So it, it goes from 22 to 24 degrees, and as it becomes uh, more of a tilt, we'll see more of a variation between seasons and also a change in the solar insulation or the amount of incident solar radiation. This happens on the scale of every 41,000 years, so it goes through that cycle over the course of 40,000 years. Another thing they, that scientists noticed over time was that Earth wobbles on its axis, so we can measure that. And so this wobble is known as precession, and precession um, tells us that it's not um, it's not going in a circle, a precise circle. It's wobbling a little bit as it uh, makes that change in tilt. And that happens every 19 to 23,000 years. OK, so there's three things going on. And these are all causing changes in the amount of solar radiation that's hitting to Earth. So here in comes the scientist. His name was Milutin Milankovic. He was a Serbian mathematician. And he took all of these observations, and in the early 1900s, so this was before computers, he calculated the amount of sunlight that would be received at each latitude based on these three distinct patterns of Earth and how it's um, oriented to the sun. 
And from this, he predicted that ice ages would peak every 100,000 years, every 40,000 years, and then with blips every 19,000 to 23,000 years. And that coincides with these changes to eccentricity, obliquity, and precession. His calculations match perfectly with observations that we have about the climate that we've discussed in other talks, I shouldn't say this talk, and so things like ice cores, ocean floor cores, tree rings, observation from coral, which don't go back nearly as far, um, but all of these different observations, they match perfectly with what Milankovitch's cycles predicted that we'd see in terms of past climates and temperatures. So again, just so that you are reminded of the three variables that change, the terms are eccentricity, obliquity, which tells us that the axis of rotation changes, and then precession, which is that wobble in Earth's axis, which causes the timing of the seasons to change slightly. If you'd like more information about these, you can read this um, Milutin Milankovic. Um, orbital variations website. So then that leads us to that final question. Is our current warming trend that we saw in that hockey stick graph, um, is that related to uh, to Milankovitch's cycles? So is this just is this just a natural cycle that we see or is it caused by something else? And so the resounding answer from the scientific community is no. The Milankovitch's cycles do not predict the warming that we're seeing. The warming that we're seeing is happening at a much faster pace than would be predicted by any of these natural cycles, unless we include the effects of rising CO2 um, due to burning of fossil fuels, which is taking CO2 that was stored in the ground over the course of millions of years, and now we're pumping it into the atmosphere at a very quick pace, offsetting the, or upsetting the CO2 balance in our atmosphere.